So we just got here yesterday and we got to do a number of interesting things. Uh, the first thing we decided to do was to see some actual movie locations, stuff that we remember from when we were kids. So uh, I'm gonna pop them up here in the video, see if you can figure out what they are. Popular location from a wonderful ladies movie about video games. Um, and here's one more for you. For film locations, classic 80s movie, classic 80s action movie. Can you tell the building, I'll give you a clue, this is the Fox Plaza. Can you tell what film this building was in? All right, so how'd you do? Did you figure out what the two locations were from? Uh, the first one was Flynn's Arcade from the movie Tron. Did you guys pick that one out? And then number two, was the Nakatomi building from Die Hard. So hopefully you checked those out. Hopefully you figured out what those were. Two funny stories about this whole thing. Uh, Nakatomi building is it's now called Fox Plaza. They do not like you taking pictures there. So we were only there a brief time before they decided to kick us out of that location. Uh, but it was cool to see the building where all that stuff done. In my opinion, in the movie Die Hard, that building is just another character in the film. Uh, the other goofy story is, looking at some of that mid-century architecture, we went by the Casa de Cadillac. Um, and I don't know if you guys heard of this, but it is a really, really old Cadillac dealership that's been around a long time. Well, apparently they were closing when we pulled into the place. And we kind of been told not to, not to go in there because they were closing, but we thought, uh, you're going to be 30 seconds and you're going to take some pictures, take some video, and out of there. So we only had time to take some quick pictures before they actually locked us in. We were locked in with all of these Cadillacs, tons, tons of Cadillacs, and we had to do like, uh, like Ant-Man and Endgame, like hold up a sign and try to find somebody to let us out of the place. Uh, it, it got kind of uh, sketchy there for a minute. I thought maybe we might have to spend the night in the Cadillac dealership or you know, walk back to the hotel, which was about seven miles away or something like that. But fortunately, someone did let us out, and it ended up just being a fun story that we can tell about our adventures here. Um, but speaking of our adventures here, we're gonna be checking out a lot of stuff in California that you guys will wanna check out. So if you have not gone down and subscribed to Retrospection, please do that and give this video a like. Tell us you wanna see more of this stuff. We're planning on going to see D23 and Disneyland and even visit the uh, back lots, which is gonna be super exciting. I should also point out this really, really cool, really fun small hotel we're staying at. It's called the Tangerine. Um, very vintage looking, very mid-century. Uh, if you're staying in Burbank, which is where we're staying the majority of this trip, you probably want to check this place out because it's super, super cool. Even if you don't stay there, check it out. Very, very cool. Can you pick out where we're at? I'll pan across here and see if this little this little blue pinpoint sticking up here, if anyone can identify what the location is. What do you think? I want me telling. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so if that blue pinpoint wasn't enough, how about this building right back here? Can you see it? Can you focus in and see what it is? Anyone figure it out? No? Alright, well how about this little water tower right here? That should be a giveaway. All right, Disney Studios, here are some of the places we're going to visit today. We're starting out here. We're in Zorro Parking. We're going to move up into the actual past the sound stage, check out some of the stuff. Here's the animation building, Royal Building, Legends Plaza, where we'll get to see a lot of cool plaques and statues and such. We're going to eat a meal over here at the Buena Vista Cafe, and then we're going to carry on all the way over this bridge right here to the ABC uh, Riverside, this is actually the ABC building right here, we're going to go through there all the way down here to get to the Roy E. Disney. This is where all the real deal animation happens and that's what we're going to check out today. Just the whole campus at a glance. So cool to be here, so excited to see some of the stuff here. No big deal, just walking down the studio back lot. Kind of nuts. 
kind of crazy. What are you looking at? I'm looking at one of the original street signs here in Disney Burbank. One of the really cool places that we found was a recording sound stage that the Sherman Brothers worked at at one of the most popular movies, Mary Poppins. They just brought us over here to the Hyperion Room, and it's cool because it's one of the original buildings from 1935, I believe it said. And they used to do like even all the old comic strips. If you remember any of the old Disney comic strips, they were done inside this building. So this one's a piece of history, and it's awesome that it's they, they've kept the building around. That's really awesome. It was Walt Disney and John Hench who helped with the pageantry for the 1960s Squaw Valley Olympic. And that's where that pulls from. Not that it's terribly far. That was also in California. So, but cool that it made its way here. One of Walt's favorite dishes. I'm gonna have a, uh, a bite of Walt's chili. This is really fancy tasting chili. It doesn't taste like what I used to eat growing up out of a can. Not by any means. Oh my gosh, this is really fancy. What are you up to here? Oh, I like that little logo. What, what is this? This is an exclusive jacket. Right here. Show us the back. Nice. It looks good on you, huh? A lot of really cool exclusive merchandise here at the Disney Studios. So many really cool Disney Studio stuff you can only get here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Oh, that's neat. That's super cool. In case you need another Mickey Mouse plush in life. It's true. It's really cool. It's a little pie. Possibly the most exciting part of our trip so far, we've gotten to see our first film star, Mark Paul Gosler, <laughs> on set for some sort of television show he's filming. If you know what the show is, let us know in the comment section below, because honestly, we don't watch TV. But I do know he was in Saved by the Bell, yeah. because that's when I did watch TV. Zach Morris used to be able to stop time, used to carry around a giant white phone, maintaining a speed limit of eight miles per hour on these back street roads that are so, so, so super congested. Actually, it makes the rest of LA look ridiculous how not congested these roads are. I think we're walking too fast. <laughs> All right, we're at the archives. We got a whole bunch of Haunted Mansion stuff out for that big 50th anniversary celebration, the bride, some of the pieces. From the attraction, just some really, really old, very, very cool. We got a lot of different images from um, the different Disney parks over the years. It's really neat to see where we've come from. Yeah, Mickey himself has changed quite a bit. Some of the, some of the old ones, absolutely horrifying. <laughs> uh, and then Roy up there for that's actually Disney World up there. Yeah, that's cool. Mickey's birthday lamp, yeah. And then, of course, the thing that everybody's talking about right now at D23, the Epcot ball, Mickey Mouse. It's absolutely nuts to me that you can't turn a corner. We have the ink and paint building, and then look behind us, and they're the dwarves. You can't turn the corner without seeing something awesome. So it's just really cool to see all this stuff, and so many great people who have worked inside this building. And speaking of great people, right behind us, let's do it a little spin. We're gonna walk through. Disney. We're gonna walk through and check out some of the Disney legends that are honored here on all these different plaques. I mean, we've seen oh Imag Imagineers, animators, puppeteers, animators, voice actors. comic strip artists, writers, tons of cool people, actors, and we're just gonna peek through and see some of the names that are honored here. We're looking through the names of some of the legends here, and Marcy's already discovered her favorite so far. Who is it? Look at it's Jim Henson. Another cool one, Clarence Ducky Nash. And then for all you Imagineering fans, there's Tony Baxter. John Goodman's here. Oh my gosh, look at the size of John Goodman's hands. Billy Crystal right next. So there you got Mike Wazowski and Sully. That's cool. Here's another pairing that's kind of cool. Danny Elfman and Johnny Depp. Exitensio. Oh, Exitensio. And then, well, and then Angela Lansbury. Lansbury. Wow, <laughs> let's see how my hands stack up against Angela Lansbury's hand. Actually, she had it. Relatively large hands for a woman. I'm not even gonna lie. It's kind of cool to see some of the thing people we don't closely associate with the Disney brand in the past make it up into the Wall of Fame. And Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, down here George Lucas, and then right over here we noticed two of my favorites. Not only do they have Stan Lee, they also got Jack Kirby here. How cool is that? Okay, we found Steve Jobs, 
Edwin, and a whole bunch of princesses. You forget how historically how important these four ladies were. That's right. But over here, we got all the Golden Girls, and I can actually compare my hand size to Betty White. Betty White, actually much smaller hands than Angela Lansbury over there. So good. Good to know. Betty White's hands, not very large. Angela Lansbury, very large. So if you're from Orlando, these statues, these bronze statues might look familiar, but the real ones, the real things exist here at the Disney Studio backlots. That's including this guy here that I know, if you've ever been to the Magic Kingdom, you've recognized it before, but this is the real deal. The authentic partners hanging out here at the Disney backlots. Again, you can't walk more than three feet without seeing something incredible. The actual animation building right behind me. I just, it's, it's unbelievable. It's not a huge lot, but there's just so much to see. It's blowing my mind. Blowing my mind. Marcy is peeking at the animation building, which I believe it said it was built in 1939. And then right behind us, there's the theater. I guess they check out all the newest Disney films, go through them, watch them. So much history here. It's actually pretty nuts. So many of our favorite animated films were done here, and it just blows my mind. Just the men and women who have worked in this location, it's really awesome.